If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. What we can do to begin the question is to draw a picture and then set up a two-dimensional motion table. So here we have the football being kicked with a speed of 20 meters per second at an angle of 53 degrees. It's located 36 meters away from this crossbar. And we're going to try to figure out what the vertical height or vertical displacement of the football is over here at the goalpost and see if it actually will clear this bar here. Now the question mentions that that bar is 3.05 meters high, so maybe we can add that to the figure. So again, we'll calculate the vertical height or vertical displacement of the ball and we'll see if it's above 3.05. Now when we start to fill into our little projectile motion table here, we have to make sure we break the initial velocity into its x and its y components. The drawing is a bit small, but hopefully we can see that the x component is adjacent to the 53 degree angle, so we'll end up using cosine, and then the y component is opposite from the 53 degree angle, so we'll end up using sine. So in other words, the components of the initial velocity will look like the following. Again, using the cosine for the x component and the sine for the y component. Of course, the 20 was the initial speed that the ball was kicked. Now, we'll continue to fill in information for the x direction. For example, we know the acceleration in the x direction is zero, which is almost always the case in a projectile motion question. We know that the displacement along the x direction is 36 meters, so we can plug that into the table. And we're going to be able to use the equations of kinematics to solve for the time. So that's our next step. Over here we have a nice and handy kinematics equation. Since the acceleration in the x direction is zero, we can eliminate this block of terms here. And then we'll divide both sides by the initial velocity to solve for time. And then we'll plug in the displacement and the initial velocity. Again, we're doing this for the x direction. And when you simplify that time on your calculator, you should get approximately 2.99 seconds. So that's how long it'll take the ball to travel horizontally from its initial starting point to the goalposts. Now the key about projectile motion is that whatever time we have in the x direction will be the same time in the y direction. So we can fill that into the y column for the time as well. Now let's turn to the y column because there are additional gaps that need to be filled. We know the acceleration in the y direction is going to be negative 9.8 because of the influence of gravity. What we don't know is the displacement. If you recall, that was our original goal, was to find the vertical displacement of the ball. So we're going to use the same equation from kinematics to find that displacement, this time in the y direction. Notice that we're using the symbol delta y now instead of delta x, but otherwise it's the same equation. So we'll fill in all the known values for the y column of our table. And when you calculate that, you should get approximately 3.94 meters. So that's the vertical displacement of the football once it reaches the goalpost. In other words, it's the height of the football, if that makes more sense. So we have 3.94 meters in height, that's where the ball is. The goalpost was only 3.05 meters off the ground, if you will recall. So indeed, the football will clear the goalpost. And when it says by how much, we simply have to subtract this height from the height of the goalpost. And when we do that subtraction, we get an answer of approximately 0.89 meters. So that is indeed the correct answer to part A. For part B, does the ball approach the crossbar while rising versus falling? All we have to do is calculate the final velocity in the y direction. And if that final velocity is positive, that means the ball is rising. But if that final velocity in the y direction is negative, that means the ball is falling. So that's our next goal is to find the final velocity. And to do that, we have this handy equation from kinematics. We'll go ahead and plug in all the known values again for the y direction. And that turns out to be a value of approximately negative 13.3 meters per second. The most important thing to note is that it is indeed negative. And when we have a negative final velocity in the y direction, that means the ball is falling as it approaches the crossbar. So the correct answer to part B will be falling. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.